given that Afghanistan has been reduced to a war zone ravaged by violence and extreme poverty for the past 50 years, it is possible that this is the last nation on earth to undertake effective megaprojects. Afghanistan, however, has started and is halfway through the implementation of its first massive project with zero outside aid, not even engineering help from anywhere, in spite of the country's unending suffering. The Kosh Tampa Canal project aims to construct an artificial river that will rank among the world's largest and longest irrigation canals once completion. What is the Kosh Tapit Canal? Why is it being built? And how did they manage to pull off such a massive accomplishment? The Kosh Tapit Canal is an artificial river located in northern Afghanistan. It originates from the Amu Daya River and spans 285 kilometers, measuring 152 meters in width, 8.5 meters in depth, and passes through the provinces of Balkh, Shen, Jal, and Fayab. About half of the canal has already been finished, and because of the nation's continued, worsening water and food scarcity situation, construction on the remaining portion is moving relatively quickly. Some Afghani neighbors who share the Amu Dire River expressed concern that the canal would have an impact on their portion of the river's water supply. Afghanistan, though, has promised to prevent this from occurring. It is made clear that it is the only nation that does not directly profit from the river, and as such, it is entitled to a portion of its benefits. For the residents of North Afghanistan, which has turned into a parched desert over the past two decades, this canal is a pressing issue. Due to inadequate irrigation systems, diminishing groundwater supplies, and global warming, more than a million Afghans will soon have access to water, thanks to the canal, which will also allow thousands of farmers to resume farming. This will be accomplished by converting 55,000 hectares of land into farms, with a primary emphasis on wheat and cereals. In actuality, the nation wants to export wheat by 2028. Three stages are planned for the project's completion, which got underway in March 2022. The canal's actual excavation takes place during the first and second phases. The installation of water irrigation systems and other infrastructure is the focus of the third phase. The Afghani National Development Corporation is in charge of overseeing the project, which has complete government funding provided through taxes. The cost was first estimated to be $500 million. New projections, however, indicate that an extra $100 million will be required. This raises the question of how the Afghani, working without outside assistance and with a small number of competent engineers and outdated equipment, was able to complete such a massive job. Certain Asian media sources described the construction of the Koch Tapit Canal in an unduly critical manner. They claimed errors, negligence, and subpar engineering technique. The project was conceived and sponsored by the government using extensive soil and terrain surveys. They didn't send any random diggers to carry out such intricate job. Making sure that water lifts are not required owing to related expenses, winter flood protection, and soil compatibility was one of the key goals of these investigations. As a result, the canal had to follow a route through level ground at a height resembling the Amu Daya river source. Along the route, they also had to make sure that the canal path is situated near cities and villages and on the most fertile soil. Following the establishment of the canal path, 200 private contractors were dispersed among 114 sections, constituting the first phase of the project that spans 108 kilometers. Up to 7,000 haul truck and excavator drivers, as well as project engineers, worked on the project and continue to do so. They are now on phase two, which spans 177 kilometers. Tens of excavators would be arranged in a queue by each contractor, with room for the haul trucks to pass in between. After that, the trucks would be loaded and driven in a systematic way to neighboring low elevation regions that had been selected for that purpose. The machines go to the next part and reproduce the procedure there, using precise maps and specifications, after a section has been excavated and authorized by the engineers and supervisors. The first phase of the project is building 14 hydraulic gates, the top of which is a vehicular bridge. When the Amu Daya river levels rise throughout the winter and during periods of intense precipitation, these gates are built to avoid flooding. In order to regulate the filling process and avoid soil displacement along the banks, an additional dirt wall, a few meters wide was placed between each of the 114 sections. As a result, the sections filled very slowly. After part one, which is closest to the Amu Daya River, was finished, water was permitted to enter it. From that point on, when the walls of earth separating them were removed, other parts were progressively filled in. It is important to underline that the floor and sides of this canal were not lined with concrete slabs, which is a good or negative thing, 
depending on who you ask. The lack of concrete slabs, in our opinion, would result in more eventual natural irrigation one kilometer away from the canal sides in addition to higher groundwater reservoir levels, which serve as backup water sources during potentially severe droughts. Additionally, putting concrete slabs would have increased the cost by over a billion dollars, which Afghanistan cannot afford. This raises another financial concern. It goes without saying that the Afghans kept things straightforward and chose a solid reinforced concrete slab design, which requires a cast in situ rather than a precast, for the two concrete bridges that were also built, one for the railway and the other for the Hamilton Bulk Highway. Along with the completed phase one, the surrounding area was integrated with segments of a large irrigation pipeline network. These subterranean irrigation pipes are intended to supply water to farms a few kilometers or more distant from the canal. In order to link with water pumps in other cities and villages, additional water mains were erected. Up to 1 million cubic meters of earth were removed per day during the latter stage of construction phase 1, which is rather remarkable considering that the majority of the excavators and haul trucks they utilize were outdated, some dating back to the 1960s. In order to strengthen the soil and stop erosion, thousands of trees were also planted along the canal banks. To assess the quality of the soil and the efficiency of irrigation systems, a 20-kilometer stretch was also planted with a range of crops. Due to the thousands of jobs created by the canal, residents have likewise experienced and are still experiencing an economic boom. Roads are upgraded and abandoned farmland are replanted. All contractors and their potential employees were and are paid fairly and on time, notwithstanding some very unpleasant reports. The diversity of the workforce and the high degree of optimism and happiness among workers, farmers, and nearby residents who have been living in a harsh environment for decades due to wars, droughts, a lack of water, and widespread poverty are other phenomena we notice while analyzing the project. The extensive usage of solar panels to power houses and workshops in the surrounding areas, which are mostly cut off from the outside world owing to a lack of electricity infrastructure, is another astounding occurrence that has appeared with this initiative. On the new farms, Little fields of solar panels are also appearing to power water bumps. The project was supposed to be finished in its entirety in 2028. However, if things continue as they are, we might have it finished as early as 2025. There are also more culverts and bridges being built. Lastly, it is important to underline that due of the exceptionally harsh sanctions imposed on the nation, a large section of Afghanistan's 40 million residents, who live largely in rural and remote areas, are suffering hunger. Therefore, we really hope that this incredible project, which will undoubtedly aid Afghanistan in recovering from the effects of war, and moving forward to become a contributing part of the international community, will be followed by additional massive initiatives pertaining to infrastructure, agriculture, energy, and water management. Do you believe that Afghanistan, under the rule of Taliban, will be able to finish this massive project and start others? Please share, like, subscribe, and click the bell button after you've told us in the comment box. With gratitude.